The Antiquan Fraktur dispute was a typographical dispute in 19th and early 20th century Germany. In most European countries, black letter typefaces like the German Fraktur were displaced with the creation of the Antiqua typefaces in the 15th and 16th centuries. However, in Germany, both fonts coexisted until the first half of the 20th century. During that time, both typefaces gained ideological connotations in Germany, which led to long and heated disputes on what was the correct typeface to use. The eventual outcome was that the Antiqua type fonts won when the Nazi party chose to phase out the more ornate looking Fraktur. Historically, the dispute originates in the different use of these two typefaces in most intellectual texts. For Latin texts, Antiqua type typefaces were normally used, whereas Fraktur was favored for works written in German. This extended even to English German dictionaries, for example, where the English words were all written in Antiqua and the German words in Fraktur. Originally, this was simply a convention. Conflict over the two typefaces first came to a head after the occupation of Germany and dissolution of the Holy Roman Empire by Napoleon in 1806, which led to a period in the history of Germany in which nationalists began to attempt to define what cultural values were common to all Germans. There was a massive effort to canonize the German national literature, for example, the Grimm Brothers' collection of fairy tales, and to create a unified German grammar. In the context of these debates, the two typefaces became increasingly polarized, Antiqua typefaces were seen to be un-German, and they were seen to represent this by virtue of their connotations as shallow, light, and not serious. In contrast, Fratur, with its much darker and denser script, was viewed as representing the allegedly German virtues such as depth and sobriety. During the Romantic era, in which the Middle Ages were glorified, the Fraktur typefaces additionally gained the, historically incorrect, interpretation that they represented German Gothicism. For instance, Goethe's mother advised her son, who had taken to the clear Antiqua typefaces, to remain, for God's sake, German, even in his letters. Otto von Bismarck was a keen supporter of German typefaces. He refused gifts of German books and Antiqua typefaces and returned them to sender with the statement Deutsche Bucher in Lady Inneskin Buxtaben Lesechnacht. I don't read German books and Latin letters. The dispute between Antiqua and Fraktur continued into the 20th century. The arguments in favor of Fraktur were based not only on historical and cultural perceptions but also on the claim that Fraktur was more suited for printing German and other Germanic languages, being more readable than Antiqua for this purpose. A 1910 publication by Adolf Reinecke, Die Deutsche Buchstabenschrift, claims the following advantages for using Fraktur as the German script. German script is a real reading script, it is more readable, i.e. the word images are clearer, than Latin script. German script is more compact in printing, which is an advantage for fast recognition of word images while reading. German script is more suitable for expressing German language as it is more adapted to the characteristics of the German language than the Latin script. German script does not cause nearsightedness and is healthier for the eyes than Latin script. German script is still prone to development, Latin script is set in stone. German script can be read and understood all over the world, where it is actually often used as ornamental script. German script makes it easier for foreigners to understand the German language. Latin script will gradually lose its position as international script through the progress of the Anglo-Saxon world. Here the author states that Anglo-Saxons in the UK, the United States and Australia are still Germanic enough to annihilate the Latin scriptler's dream of a Latin world script. The use of Latin script for German language will promote its infestation with foreign words. German script does not impede in all the proliferation of German language and German culture in other countries. On May 4, 1911. A peak in the dispute was reached during a vote in the Reichstag. The Verein für Altschrift, Association for Antiqua, had submitted a proposition to make Antiqua the official typeface. Fraktur had been the official typeface since the foundation of the German Empire, and no longer teach German current, black letter cursive, in the schools. After a long and, in places, very emotional debate, the proposition was narrowly rejected 85 to 82. The Fraktur typefaces were particularly heavily used during the time of Nazism, when they were initially represented as true German script. The press scolded for its frequent use of Roman characters under Jewish influence and German emigres urged to use only German script. However, in 1941, Fraktur was banned in a schriftless edict on script, signed by Martin Bormann as so-called Schwabacher Judenlettern, Schwabacher Jewish letters. The edict mentions publications destined for foreign countries, 
So one possible reason for the reversal of policy was that Antiqua would be more legible to those living in the occupied areas. The impetus for a rapid change in policy probably came from Joseph Goebbels and his propaganda ministry. Readers outside German-speaking countries were largely unfamiliar with frauteur typefaces. Foreign fonts and machinery could be used for the production of propaganda and other materials in local languages, but not so easily in German as long as the official preference for frauteur remained. In any case, Adolf Hitler personally disliked the fraktur typeface, as demonstrated by a declaration made in the Reichstag in 1934. Your alleged Gothic internalization does not fit well in this age of steel and iron, glass, and concrete, of womanly beauty and manly strength, of head raised high and intention defiant. In a hundred years, our language will be the European language. The nations of the East, the North, and the West will, to communicate with us, learn our language. The prerequisite for this, the script called Gothic is replaced by the script we have called Latin so far. Bormann's Edict of January 3, 1941, at first forbade only the use of black-letter typefaces. A second memorandum banned the use of current, including Sutherland, which had only been introduced in the 1920s. From the academic year 1941-42 onwards, only the so-called normal schrift, normal script, which had hitherto been taught alongside Sutherland under the name of Latin script, was allowed to be used and taught. However, current remained in use until 1945 on SS insignia, names of SS divisions, etc., and in some other cases. After the Second World War, the Sutherland script was once again taught in the schools of some German states as an additional script, but it could not hold for long against the Latin curse of scripts. Since few people remain who can read current, most old letters, diaries, etc. remain inaccessible for all but the most elderly German speakers. As a consequence, most German-speaking people today find it difficult to decide for their own parents' or grandparents' letters, diaries, or certificates. The Fraktur script remains present in everyday life and some pub signs, beer brands, and other forms of advertisement, where it is used to convey a certain rusticity and oldness. However, the letter forms used in many of these more recent applications deviate from the traditional letter forms, specifically in the frequent and traditional use of the round S instead of the long S, S, at the beginning of a syllable the omission of ligatures, and the use of letter forms more similar to Antiqua for certain especially hard-to-read fractura letters such as K-books wholly written in fractura are nowadays read mostly for particular interests. Since many people have difficulty understanding black letter, they may have trouble accessing older editions of literary works in German. A few organizations such as the Bund für Deutsche Schrift und die Sprache continue to advocate the use of fractura typefaces highlighting their cultural and historical heritage and their advantages when used for printing Germanic languages. But these organizations are small, somewhat sectarian, and not particularly well known in Germany. In the United States, Mexico, and Central America, Old Order Amish, Old Order Mennonite, and Old Colony Mennonite schools still teach the current handwriting in Fraktur script. German books printed by Amish and Mennonite printers use the Fraktur script.